Okay, this is a very, very personal video that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And, um, here it goes. Okay, my name is Hope Schoen. I am 17. And I'm about to tell you my testimony of all that God has brought me through. Well, when I was little, I used to be the only one in the um, family or whatever. Like, I was the only, only child. And um, once my sister Gabby came along, I became very mad and angry and I wanted nothing to do with her. So when she, right when she got out of the hospital, when she was born, I got her out of the crib and I threw her downstairs. I wanted to kill her. I think I kind of did, but she's still alive today and I'm thankful for her. And um, while growing up, when I was in uh, elementary school, and middle school, I would always get bullied for being fat, and I got called hurtful names like hippo, um, fatty, faggot, all that kind of stuff, and it really hurt. The one that hurt the worst was being called a hippo and then it didn't stop there in middle school I was like I guess you could say I was kind of like an outcast but I wanted to be part of the popular crew or whatever in the sixth grade like I got bullied by this one chick on the bus and then everybody else joined in and only one person stuck up for me and I just had very low thoughts about myself so, and then, like, I used to binge eat to get all my anger out and stuff. I would, like, sit in front of the refrigerator and just cry while eating, and I became obese. And then, in the eighth grade... I started doing witchcraft and that basically was going on for two years and let me tell you something witchcraft is not a joke whether you're a good witch or a bad witch it's basically all bad and I learned that the hard way I mean like I was people would tell me like Man, you're so mean. You look like a witch and stuff. You look so evil. Like, and I took that as a compliment. And I would just smile away. And I, I'm sorry, but I used my magic or whatever for evil. And I wanted to plot revenge. And I kind of did get my revenge. I would, like, really scare people and glare at people. Give them, like, a death glare and stuff. And, um... Yeah, and then in the ninth grade it continued, but I got deeper into it, it started uh, working with spells and making my own spells and stuff, and dressing in all black, and just listening to that kind of music and stuff, and I, I, I'm telling you, I got really deep into it, and then I started getting, like, attacked by demons and bad spirits and stuff like doing witchcraft open doors and gates to hell for me and it, it it was just all a big mess and then I would have like dreams and nightmares about me flying and all that kind of stuff I had a couple of dreams about me being hung me being executed uh, hung at stake for being a witch, just all that kind of stuff, and it, 
it just really made me scared. And then in the ninth grade, I was very, I guess you could say, kind of gullible. Um, I would believe like almost anything that anybody would say. I was very naive. There was ninth grade is where I fell for the person that was my first love. I basically told him that I was a witch and he accepted me for who I was and stuff. And then after that, everything like just went wrong and I just, I, I really don't know. And then, like, all the hurt that I've been feeling and stuff started to cut myself on my legs and arms to get out all my anger and I would lash out on people and curse them out and I I'm telling you, I was very scary. And, like, my crush or whatever had told me to stop cutting myself and I did and I guess I just stopped for him or whatever but then in the summer like I would have boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend and the thing was I went out with them right when I met them and it did not none of my relationships have lasted let me tell you that and like it was just horrible. And then my cutting just got badder and badder. That's not even a word, but yeah. Um, I used to write songs and poems about the person who broke my heart and I wanted to get my revenge on them and stuff. I have a couple of those songs still. I'm gonna read them all. And Amy Lee and Evanescence and like all that kind of stuff, like that was a big thing on me. Like I really wanted to be the next Amy Lee and stuff, so I like started dressing like her sound and like her, like all that kind of stuff. Well, basically, this one is called, um, I won't listen to you anymore and it was written March 24, 2011 and this is about the guy who like really broke my heart really bad and okay you got me lost in your eyes I forgot all my lies you tore me apart and you're so deceiving and you got me bleeding and then the chorus is you always call my name it's driving me insane but you won't talk the truth I won't listen to you anymore you come to me just why why can't you see how much you meant to me it's been all these years so why are you coming to me into tears. You've torn me apart. I promise I will not be in your heart. And then the chorus repeats twice and then you will have nightmares. This, this is part of my revenge I wanted. All these years I tried to talk to you but I've never gotten through to you. You tore me apart. I swear there will be darkness in your heart. There's more revenge. And it, it just it just got really bad and I just would want to I guess you could say sometimes like I wanted to kill people and I really wanted to just like hurt people till they co couldn't stand it anymore and it, it was just really horrible and then like my crush or whatever breaking my heart for like the first time ever that just really hurt me and it just tore me apart like so much and, um, well, everything changed a couple years ago. Well, when, okay, it was 2011, around, I think it was around October, 
what was it November? It was around 2000. It was in 2011. I just can't remember the exact date. But there was this thing at a church called Raleigh Assembly of God. And uh, my sister wanted to go so bad, and I had nothing better to do, so I decided to go. And when I went there, um, I met all these nice people and everything. And then during worship, I felt the spirit of the Lord all around that place. And I just felt complete peace. And I just fell to my knees, like crying and weeping and asking for God to come into my life. And for him to be my savior and everything. Well, let me tell you something. When I was little, like, I grew up in a family of Pentecostal Christians or whatever. But my mom, uh, she did witchcraft. So I'm not surprised that, I guess, that kind of influenced me to do witchcraft in a way. And I used to have this, um... Like, I guess you could say paranormal investigation crew or whatever. And I was really into spirits and looking for them and stuff. And then one day I was just standing out. Like, I think I just did a spell or whatever. And I, I literally saw a spirit in front of me. And it, it was so scary. I would just see, like, dark figures, like, everywhere. And let me tell you, witchcraft, cutting, and then, oh, another thing that I did was I dressed very inappropriately to get guys' attention. It worked alright. Like, I would wear a sports bra and uh, really short shorts in the summer. And, like, guys would be calling me sexy and stuff. I don't, I'm not like that now. I don't like that. I cannot believe I ever did that stuff. But, uh, anyway... I had asked the I had asked the Lord to come into my life and I just like fell on my knees crying and I just felt complete peace after that. And then a couple weeks later we have this thing called the fail pill and I threw all of my witchcraft books away, my spells, my revenge poems, my booty shorts and they were really short and my books, like all of that. Um I basically committed almost every sin in the Bible except adultery and sex and I've never done okay I've never done drugs I've never smoked I've never drank but I've committed every other sin I've stolen before I've lied before I've done revenge before I cursed out my mom and stuff. Like, it was really bad. But, let me tell you, if God can bring me out of all this stuff, He can definitely bring you out of all this stuff. And, it doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you for who you are. And He loves you no matter what. And all he wants is to have a relationship with you and to be the Lord and Savior of your life. If you haven't accepted uh, God as your Lord and Savior or Jesus, I encourage you to do that whenever you feel like. But I never thought I could be brought out of all this stuff. Another thing is that I've wanted to commit suicide like so many times when I was going through my rebellious stage of life. Like there was a time that I almost did it, but then I just thought, what would all my friends think? What would my family think? What if I wasn't here? And I just stopped. Well, let me tell you, the thoughts of coming, like the thoughts of coming back to witchcraft and uh, cutting, like they have been tempting and stuff lately, but I don't have anything to do with it, and I don't like it, and 